Hi and welcome to this video where we look at how to implement signature verification to authenticate webhooks. We begin by looking at a common vulnerability with webhooks which allows any client to send requests to a webhook URL. This vulnerability is what we will be fixing by authenticating our webhook URL using signature verification. We will start by setting up a webhook on Stripe where we then access the secret key used to sign our webhook. On our server, we will then implement the signature verification check by computing the webhook signature and comparing it to the one sent by Stripe. We then try to send a request from an unauthorized client and see how the verification process blocks that request. We also trigger an actual Stripe webhook and as expected, it passes the authentication check confirming that our webhook URL is now protected from unwanted requests. Finally, we demonstrate how Stripe prevents replay attacks by retrying the webhook outside the timestamp expiration window. Stripe blocks the webhook request with a message that informs us that the webhook will no longer be acknowledged. Excited to get started with this tutorial? Let's begin. So in this video, we're going to be learning how to use signature verification to authenticate our webhooks and we're going to be using Stripe as our webhook provider. To begin, I have set up a webhook URL here. So I have a webhook URL. This webhook URL points to this running Node.js server. And this Node.js server has two endpoints. One endpoint logs the webhook. And we also have another web, another endpoint rather that fetches the logs. So any webhook that we log, this endpoint helps us fetch the logged items. And we have the default route. So why do we need signature verification? Now, if I take this webhook URL, I'm just going to copy it and make sure I'm copying everything. So if I take this webhook URL and go into Postman and I stick it into the address bar and then set the request, a post request, definitely, using this payload that mimics a malicious payload. If I send it, I'm going to get success. And if I go to my UGDEC instance, that's the CLI that's running, I'm going to get a successful result. This webhook URL was meant for Stripe webhooks, but now I can send webhooks from anywhere, from any HTTP client, and get a successfully logged webhook. If I open the event page, you see I have a successfully logged webhook. And if I go to the endpoint to fetch the webhook, as you can see here, the evil data has been inserted into our database. Now we don't want this, and that's why we're going to be implementing signature verification. With signature verification, Stripe takes the payload and computes a signature using the HMARC algorithm. And when this signature is computed, the signature is sent in an header to our endpoint. And on our endpoint, we can calculate the same signature and compare it with the one sent by Stripe. And if we get a match, that means the authentication process is successful. And if there's no match, that means the payload has been tampered with. So let's begin the process of implementing our signature verification. First, we're going to implement a webhook on Stripe. So I'm just going to click, this is my Stripe dashboard. I'm just going to click add endpoint. And here I will enter my endpoint URL. That will be my webhook URL. So I'm just going to copy this and paste in here. Just going to leave the description blank. Then for events, I'm going to be working with the product events. So I'm just going to type product product yeah I'm going to select every event that has to do with the product and click add endpoint so now my webhook is set up on stripe and i can go to my project to set up signature verification but before we go just as we have created the webhook you can see a signing secret item here if you click to reveal this you will see the key that Stripe will use to sign all your webhooks. So this is the key that we're going to be using on our project to also compute the signature and compare it with the one sent by Stripe. So let's go into our project. I'm going to go to server.js and just to save time, I'm going to copy over some code for the signature verification. First, I'm going to copy this snippet, then go to my project and just at the top here, just going to paste those here. So what are we doing here? First, we have the Stripe library. So you have to have the Stripe library installed in your Node.js project. Stripe has libraries for different languages like PHP, Python. But here, I'm using the one for Node.js. So we require Stripe and we pass in our API key. Then I set a variable 
to the secret that's the webbook secret that's the secret that we use to sign every webbook that has been sent here so next let's go back to our snippet file i'm going to copy this authenticate signature function go back to my project scroll down and here under this perform each mark verification comment i'm going to paste the snippet here we have an authenticate signature function and what it does is it simply checks if we have a post request and we're getting the raw body of the request for you to compute your signature you need the raw body of the request you need the signature secret and you also need to get the header coming from stripe in order to compare here we're using stripe library so we're just going to call the construct event function of the webbooks object and we're going to pass in the request raw body we're going to pass in the signature we're getting from our header and the secret that's the webbook secret and if this is successful we can simply go on to the next function in our endpoint but if it's not successful we're going to return it an error message from stripe so i'm just going to save this here we are applying the middleware because this is a middleware function so we're applying the middleware to our application I'm going to save this then go to my terminal restart my node.js application now that my node.js application has restarted if i go to postman and then try to send a request i get the usual success message from ookdeck because ookdeck successfully received this request but if i go to my ookdeck terminal we now have a 401 this request has now been blocked because our signature verification is taking effect if i open this if i open the url here on the event page let's scroll down and as you can see it says unable to extract timestamp and signature from header this indicates that the attacker is not sending the stripe signature and stripe is able to detect that and it is flagging this as a malicious request and even if the attacker decides to insert the stripe signature I'm just going to copy the stripe signature from here and go back to postman and go to the headers paste that in and try to send an invalid signature i still get the success from ookdeck because ookdeck successfully receives the request but if we go to our cli we still get a 401 and if we open the event page for that we're still going to get an error that says it's unable to extract the timestamp and the signature from the header. So our endpoint is protected from malicious attackers using signature verification. Now let's try to send an actual webbook from Stripe to confirm that actual webbooks would actually get authenticated. I'm going to go to the product section. I already have a product here, so I'm going to edit it. I have the webbook set up to trigger for edit events. So I'm just going to edit this from polo shirt to shirts. Just add an S. Then click save product. Now if I go back to my terminal. Sorry. We can see a successfully logged webhook. And I can go to the event page. Open the URL. Scroll down. Click on the attempt. And we see webhook successfully logged. If I go to my fetch webbook logs endpoint and refresh you can see a couple of webbooks logged here stripe is actually sending the event multiple times so don't worry about that so as you can see here the webbooks are being logged going back to the event page stripe sends the signature in a stripe dash signature header and if we look at the header we can see this t equals one six and some big number value this is actually the, a timestamp that stripe sends along with the webhook and this is meant to prevent something called replay attacks replay attacks are performed by malicious actors when they grab an authenticated request and they send it multiple times to the endpoint to cause like a denial of service uh situation or just dump a piece of data multiple times into your application or cause your application to perform an action multiple times that's the action that the webhook is supposed to trigger attackers can send a webhook multiple times to 
make your application repeat that event multiple times to their own favor or just to compromise your system. So Stripe sends this value to ensure that attacks cannot be replayed within a certain time frame. The default is five minutes, and this means that after five minutes, this webhook cannot be retried or replayed. Now to test and validate that, I'm going to wait on this request. I'm going to wait for five minutes or more than five minutes, and I'm going to retry this event once again. I'm going to retry this event, and we're going to see how Stripe blocks the event based on the time expiration for this webhook. So now that it's been longer than five minutes since we sent the last webhook, let's retry this webhook and see what we get. I'm going to go up here on the event page and click on retry. This webhook is queued for retry. As you can see, the webhook that was once successfully logged is now getting a 401 error. And when we click on that, let's see what we get. We see this Shopify error that says timestamp outside the tolerance zone. Timestamp outside the tolerance zone, which means that we have exceeded the maximum time for this webhook to be relevant or be acknowledged. And this is one more thing that we can achieve with signature verification by verifying the timestamp for the webhook that was sent. In this video, we have demonstrated how to perform signature verification using Stripe webhooks. We also saw how Stripe prevents replay attacks by verifying the timestamp on the webhook that was sent. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and you can subscribe to our channel for more videos on webhook security and webhooks in general.